Hey, I'm Adam Dreskel from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to look at the best Visa credit cards on the market. But before we do it, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So we don't often care as cardholders if our card is a Visa or if it's a MasterCard. We sort of think of them sometimes as interchangeable. They are the payment networks. They are not the company that is actually issuing that card to us. And most places are going to accept either one of them. So we don't care that much. However, Visa or MasterCard would like to uh, differentiate themselves. Visa sort of does it in some of their cards by having Visa signature levels and Visa infinite levels where certain credit cards are going to offer you extra insurances, discounts from certain retailers, that kind of thing. And then MasterCard has their own with the world and the world elite. Now, one reason, especially in the last couple of years, that people might be seeking out Visa in particular, however, is the fact that Visa is the only type of credit card accepted inside Costco stores. So if you want to shop at Costco and use a credit card inside the store, it's got to be a Visa. And so that leaves some people seeking which credit cards are Visas. All right, let's start on the cashback side. I'm going to start with what I think of as sort of foundational credit cards, the cards that maybe if you were only going to carry one card, these would be the places to start. So you have the Wells Fargo Active Cash Visa, 2% cash back everywhere on all of your purchases, no categories to consider. Same thing with the FNBO Evergreen Visa, 2% everywhere. Both of those cards, as I make this video, have $200 bonus opportunities. You have the Fidelity Visa as well that is a 2% card, no bonus, at least not as a public offer as I make this video. There's also the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which is a 1.5% cash back card on most purchases, but then you do have some categories where you can get more including 3% on dining, and that has a nice bonus offer as well for new card holders. So any of those cards, all of which are Visa, might be places that you would start if you were going to just have one card or if you were getting a card sort of as a foundation and then you're going to build from there. There are a number of other cashback Visa credit cards that definitely are worthy. I tend to think of them as complementary to the cards that we just talked about, meaning I would maybe get one of those cards first and then build off from there. But depending on your spending patterns, they might be the first card out of your wallet or maybe even the only card in your wallet. So two right off the bat that I like are from US Bank. Both of them are no annual fee Visa cards. You've got the Cash Plus Visa, gives you 5% cash back in two categories that you get to choose from a list, 2% back in a, another category, an everyday category that you get to choose 1% everywhere else. The Altitude Go gives you 4% on dining. That's its most noteworthy feature, I would say. You also have 2% categories and then 1% as well, both of those with a nice bonus. Next up, the Venmo Visa, no annual fee, 3% back in the purchasing category where you spend the most each month, 2% back in the purchasing category where you spend the second most each month, 1% back on everything else. There are predefined categories for that 2% and 3% cash back. Now, one of those categories is grocery, and I don't have this card, so I'm going off other people's experiences with it, but one of those categories is grocery, and my understanding is that in this case, with this card, purchases at Costco actually code as grocery. So if grocery was your top spend category, you could potentially get 3% back at Costco. Now, normally other credit cards don't code Costco as a grocery category. It is sort of pushed off to the side. It is excluded. So if that is true with this card, that would make this card really strong for Costco in particular, even more so than the Costco Visa that we're going to talk about next. Next up then is the Costco Anywhere Visa, which is only open to paid Costco members. It gives you 4% back on gas purchases, which is really strong on up to $7,000 per year in those purchases. Beyond $7,000, you'd get 1% on gas. You get 3% back at restaurants, 2% at Costco, and then 1% everywhere else. There's no bonus opportunity for new card holders with this. A pretty strong card overall, but it's not so amazing. The Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Visa, no annual fee, 3% cash back in a purchasing category of your choice from a list that Bank of America provides. You also get 2% back on grocery and wholesale warehouse club purchases, 1% everywhere else. As I make this video, 200 
$200 bonus opportunity. Now there is a $2,500 cap per quarter on those 3% and 2% categories combined. So if you go over that in the 2% and 3% categories, you get 1% there. This card is especially strong in the fact that one of those 3% categories is online shopping, something that's not particu particularly easy to get with other credit cards on the market. The Amazon Rewards Visa no annual fee card that gives 5% back on your Amazon purchases if you are a paid Amazon Prime customer. Otherwise, you would get 3% back on your Amazon purchases. There are also some 2% categories on this card and then 1% everywhere else. If you are a regular Amazon shopper, especially if you are a Prime member, well, then this is a card that would make a lot of sense for you. The Verizon Visa, a good credit card if you are a Verizon customer, 4% in rewards on gas purchases, 4% on grocery purchases 3% on dining. There are some other enhanced categories and credits that come with this card. However, this actually is not a cashback card. It is a rewards card, and that means that the way you can redeem does not include cashback. So you can redeem against your Verizon bill or for Verizon purchases that you might make if you buy a phone through Verizon. And then you also do have some travel and gift card redemptions with this card, but you can't just get straight cashback. And then finally here on the cashback side of things, we have the PNC Cash Rewards Visa which gives 4% back at gas stations, 3% on dining, 2% on groceries, 1% everywhere else. Now there is an $8,000 yearly cap on those 4%, 3%, 2% categories combined. So if you are a really big spender, maybe this card not quite as attractive, but overall a pretty nice one. We're gonna move on to travel rewards cards that are Visa branded in a second, but I wanna give a quick shout out here to the Pedal Visa cards. The Pedal 1 and Pedal 2 Visa cards are geared toward people that are either new to credit or maybe have had some past credit problems and are rebuilding their credit or maybe don't have much credit and are trying to get it built further. Some decent rewards and some cards that maybe are a little easier to get qualified for than some of the other cards we talk about. All right, now let's get into travel credit cards that are Visa branded. I'm going to start with the sort of higher end luxury travel credit cards. Three of the big dogs in this space are Visa cards, those being the Capital One Venture X, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and the US Bank Altitude Reserve. The Capital One Venture X, the sort of new kid on the block that has made a big splash. It has a little bit lower annual fee than these other cards, has some really nice travel credits, good earnings, lounge access, a whole lot of good things going on with this card. If you are someone that maybe is getting into higher end travel cards for the first time, it's pretty easy to justify paying the annual fee on this card, maybe more so than the other two, although that's not true for everyone. So the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a card that has a little higher annual fee. It's got some good credits, nice earning on uh, your everyday rewards as well. Also really good travel transfer partners. A lot of people like this card because they can combine it with other Chase credit cards, combine the points together, and and use those points through Chase's travel portal and get a 50% boost on the value of those points. So that is pretty attractive. And then the US Bank Altitude Reserve, I don't like it quite as much as the other two, but one of the things that is a very strong selling point for a lot of people is that you have a very good uh, reward for mobile wallet purchases. So if you are someone that does a whole lot of your purchasing via mobile wallets, this is a card that you might look at and like better than the other two. A couple of other general travel reward Visa credit cards with lower annual fees that make sense to look at. The Chase Sapphire Preferred $95 annual fee. Not as much going on with this as that Chase Sapphire Reserve, but it is a way to be able to combine your points with other Chase cards and use them either through the travel portal or to get access to Chase's travel transfer partners. Through the portal, you'll still get a 25% boost versus the 50% on the Chase Sapphire Reserve. The NF CU Navy Federal Credit Union flagship rewards card, a travel card with only a $49 annual fee. Doesn't have a ton with that $49 annual fee, but you do get three points per dollar on travel, two points per dollar everywhere else. So if you have a fairly high spend on your credit card, this is one that has an annual fee that is pretty doable and you get some pretty nice point multipliers. 
There are a number of airline and hotel specific credit cards that are Visa, including all Southwest Airlines cards, all United Airlines cards. You've got the uh, Alaska Airlines Visa on the hotel end. You've got the World of Hyatt Visa, which a lot of people are very high on. Marriott has a couple of Visa cards, the Boundless card being the better of the two as far as I'm concerned. You have the Wyndham uh, line of cards, which are all Visa, the Earner card, the no annual fee one I think is probably the biggest biggest crowd pleaser here, but there are a number of them there. All depends on how much you fly or stay at certain hotels, whether you want to pay more in annual fees or less or no annual fee at all with these cards. So lots of good consumer credit card choices that are Visa branded. I also want to take a quick look here at business credit cards. There aren't as many of them, but there aren't as many business credit cards out there on the market in general. If you want a Visa in particular, the Chase Inc. business credit cards are all Visa. I think the Inc. business cash card or the Inc. business preferred card in particular are strong cards. U.S. Bank has its triple cash rewards Visa, which is, I think is a good card. You have the uh, business version of the Costco visa that you might look at and then some of those same airline and hotels out there that you would take a look at as well. Southwest, Alaska, United, Wyndham, Hyatt. Is that all of them? It is all of them. So as you can see, there are a zillion good Visa credit cards out there on the market. It's sort of a weird way to slice credit cards in a way because like I said at the beginning of this video, Visa and MasterCard we tend to think of as sort of interchangeable. So we just kind of look at all the credit cards on the market, at least most of us do when we are looking for different features. So when I'm talking about these Visa cards, that means I'm leaving out some very good MasterCards that maybe you could put some of these cards up against. But if you are looking very much specifically for a Visa credit cards. Those are the ones that I see as the best on the market. Questions, comments, put them in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you don't want to do that, don't want to leave a comment, don't want to look at my website, whatever, watch this video.